One year later, post Ted Lasso, I think Apple TV is doing something novel and really interesting, a massive international rollout with a slate of original non-franchise content reminiscent, frankly, of the HBO days of yore. But Christina Warren, Christina, post Mandalorian season two, thinks we're gonna find Disney Plus and just their massive brands are now fully operational. So sit back, relax, hit that subscribe button and bell, and then we're gonna argue about it right now. Sponsored by Curiosity Stream. I mean, I think I have to say, you know, Disney Plus has been a smashing success, and not just from a you know monetary standpoint, which of course it is. It is basically you know kind of keeping the company up right now um, and, and raking in billions and billions of dollars as, as theme parks are, are closed and as you know some of their their big movie productions are are delayed um, and and helping keep that merchandising machine running. Uh, and, but it's also been a, a really big success from a content perspective, you know, like people really like it. They've had some really good content. And I think that, uh, you know, like it's, we're, we're all kind of disney uh, Apple TV plus, you know, they give everybody a year for free. I now get it. I think, you know, as, as part of my Apple one subscription, although I would pay for it. I think they even extended that year another three months or so. And I, I've actually have to say, um, I've been pleasantly surprised with the service, uh, having said that, I think that even though it's only five dollars a month, if I was looking at you know where I was going to spend my money, you know Disney Plus is is the obvious winner. Like if you had to choose one, Disney Plus is is going to get the coin. Uh, I think that I've been I've been impressed more than I thought that I would be with some of the Apple TV Plus shows. I thought the Morning Show was a really really good show, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it comes back and how they handle you know the pandemic and COVID um, in that world. Ted Lasso is the best show on television so and the, the best comedy on television and uh, a huge coup for Apple because that was a show that was produced. that was an NBC like commercial property and it was produced by Warner brothers and it didn't wind up on Peacock and it didn't wind up on HBO max. And, and that is to me um, a real failure of both of those companies and, and both of those um, people who are acquiring, um, you know, the shows that, that, it, that it went to Apple. They haven't had that like, okay, I have to subscribe for this one specific piece of content, but, Disney Plus doesn't have to. Like, if you're a Star Wars person, you're into The Mandalorian. Uh, they just announced this massive slate of content and original programming, which looks amazing. But the thing is, is that even if you're not into any of those little bits, the fact that you get the entire catalog is in and of itself such a huge boon that people are going to subscribe. The thing that I found super interesting was initially there was this fear that Eddie Q and Tim Cook would be there line item vetoing not just shows, but you know, dialogue and plot right. points. Um, and in the end, uh, Jennifer Aniston ended up cursing more in one episode of The Morning Show than I think I did all of 2019. Not totally. 2020. No way 2020, but 2019 right. at least. 2019. Jason Momoa was like cutting people in half and they had weird sexualized priests and things. And ironically, Disney Plus was like, oh, no, D Lizzie McGuire, uh, she's right. a little bit a little bit too much um, it's a great a neckline point. there. You're going to Hulu. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I think Disney is way more puritanical than Apple has been. Although I will say, you know, as we're recording this, uh, the news just broke uh, on, on a couple of days ago in The New York Times that um, Apple had picked up a, a show based on uh, the the you know, happenings of, of Gawker um, Media, which is a company that I, uh, Disclosure, uh, worked for um, in the past. And um, Tim Cook personally is, is what the reporting says, nixed the show. And now it's, it's um, you know, searching for uh, another home. And so there definitely have been, I think there are reasons to not be concerned, but certainly to be aware of the fact that this is a tech company who has a very specific point of view and that that is going to impact what types of programming is greenlit. Um, they said, and I think then, Eddie Q, they said Eddie Q said no hard, no hard sex and no China. Right, no hard sex and no China. And, you know, you that doesn't mean you can't make great content. Uh, I, would, I would argue that that is kind of at odds with a truly, like, independent studio. Like they couldn't um, make Game of Thrones conceivably. No, they absolutely couldn't make Game of Thrones. Um, uh, but, but also, I feel like even the China thing. I mean, I feel like that's actually a bigger problem than, than the the sexuality stuff uh, because Disney is not going to do the, the the sex stuff. Uh, although you know they might on on Hulu. Um, and they won't but, do China but, either, I think, because they're so enmeshed now. <laughs> uh, perhaps, although yeah. you know they got they had the criticism with Mulan and and they they had yeah. to alter certain things. But I but I, I do what I'm saying. Is like I I wouldn't see Disney, for instance 
intervening with people at Fox or at, um, you know, Hulu and saying you can't have content that is about China. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't anticipate that the same way I would not anticipate you seeing that sort of thing um, at HBO proper HBO Max. I don't know. Yeah, the other thing that I found interesting is that and I didn't assume this is that I didn't realize the variety of programming that TV plus would get. I I have a huge affinity for Star Wars and Marvel mm-hmm. and all Disney owns 80 percent of my childhood right, right. now. Um, so I'm all in for those things. But if you prefer Star Trek or you prefer the DC characters or, you know, like you don't like the Muppets. Disney doesn't have that much for you. Right. Uh, well, Apple doesn't have that much at all, but there is such a wide variety of shows it that is. ended up coming out. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's what's kind of actually interesting about Apple TV Plus is that in a lot of ways it is kind of trying to be a traditional network where, you know, you see kind of like if you were to go back 40 years and you were to look at um, NBC or CBS's primetime lineup and you were to go like down by the days of the week, you would see that they have, you know, like drama shows and they have comedies and they have, you know, sports and they have, you know, uh, you know, movies and, and other stuff. I kind of appreciate that throwback because Netflix doesn't seem to have much of any identity. You know, it's basically yes. like 14 different networks. Disney is very much, you know, the Disney identity. And the brands, um, yeah. Exactly. And, and, um, Apple I think is, is the one that, yeah, I, I honestly do feel like it looks like a broadcast network from the eighties. Um, but I mean that in a, in a, in a good way, not in a pejorative. No, no, totally. And you raise a really good point too, because going through 2020, you know, it's, it's hard to tell what actual content uh, Apple TV plus is going to be able to bring to us next year. Right. They renewed a bunch of shows, but I don't know what the production timelines are. And Disney right. uh, had the similar problems, but they still managed to get a second season of Mandalorian out. They have that huge catalog and they just announced they're going to do a hundred shows a year. Like there are more Star Wars and Marvel TV announcements than I could keep up with. It was like a, a tweet every two minutes. No, and that and pipeline is so big. The pipeline is massive and the IP pipeline is, is enormous. I think that's the one thing that's sort of interesting too. You know, um, Apple bought, um, uh, you know, the, the rights to the, to the peanut stuff. Yes. And there've been some rumors that they might buy like the MGM catalog. Um, and that wouldn't give them James Bond, but it would give them the older Bond films. I, I feel like that would actually be a good move if they would buy one of the, one of the catalogs of, you know, United Artists or MGM or something like that. And it was interesting too, um, because both Apple and Disney, Apple especially managed to get all their content in a hundred plus countries on day one. Disney plus took a little while, but they're in many countries. And when you look at HBO Max, for example, they're in the U.S. and they've made all these side deals to where they don't even yep. own their IP in a lot no. of other countries. Right. This is the advantage that you have if you're an Apple or a Disney um, or a Netflix and and you have or an Amazon, too, for that matter, where you have a pure digital play, whereas HBO Max has this very, very, very profitable uh, legacy, you know, cable like, um, you know, business that um they, they can't just get rid of because it literally rep- yeah. it used to represent something I, I, something ridiculous like like eighty percent of of all of of Time Warner's profits came from HBO at one point and most of that was coming you know from from the cable business and 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 they obviously shifted to uh, you know the the direct subscription stuff um, uh, later on but um, you know they can't just throw that away I mean you're talking about you know tens of billions of dollars a year like you're, you can't just get rid of that but it does hurt yeah. them I think when it comes to like having like an international brand where you know you can watch it wherever the, the way that people this, are now becoming used to just this now they made that huge announcement that angered all of Hollywood about yeah. putting all the movies first run movies yep. on HBO Max but that only exists in the US and because they've sold those rights in other countries exactly. those platforms are not going to pay the amount that they need to pay no. So you're just not going to be able to stream them. You'll maybe be able to get them on iTunes, but otherwise they're not going to be in the theaters and they're not going to be streaming now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that was just a disaster. They didn't even call the, the, you know, producers and the actors and the directors up in advance. I mean, that was, that was the real thing. It's like Chris Nolan, so angry. Uh, he, to, he and, and the Dune director. Villeneuve. Yeah, exactly. Villeneuve is 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 furious. And and I, I think with good reason, right? Like it's like, you know, uh, the Dune franchise is probably dead at this point because yeah. you're not going to spend $300 million in most cases to have a direct to VOD movie. Yeah. Um, this is the interesting thing. I think actually the interesting opportunity for Apple. Apple did pay a bunch, a bunch of money for the, you know, the upcoming Tom Hanks film. Yeah. Disney is obviously playing around with how they're going to be releasing some of their films. They've actually seems like they've shifted most of their money into television. And they said, okay, yeah. we're just going to do TV now. But but you wonder what they're going to do with Black Widow, right? Because yeah. that is a billion dollar movie. You 
presumably even Disney is not going to want to release a billion dollar movie to a streaming service. So um, I think in some ways this has actually been good that Apple has been slower. It, it's weird. The pandemic in some ways I think has been beneficial to Apple because they they have been behind, especially compared to Amazon and Netflix. And, you know, Disney has all their massive IP, but they've, they've been behind the other players. And what's what's interesting about the pandemic is that you can't buy your way out of it. Like nobody yeah. is going to get more time or whatnot. And Apple actually showed the trailer for Foundation at WWDC. And I didn't know if they would because that almost assumes that they'll be able to finish it as, as right. planned. No, I mean, and I think that and that is the question, although, I mean, I feel like, you know, that's kind of that's such a Hollywood move. You know, you show it whether it's ready or not. Yeah. And, um, you know, because part of that is, is you know, they, they want to get they want to get buyers. They want to get people excited. They're not selling advertisements per se, but they definitely want to get yeah. subscribers. You know, when you look at Disney Plus and you look at Apple TV Plus and even things like HBO Max, where do you see them going over the next year or what do you think are the smart moves for them to do over the next year? The biggest thing I think we can expect, and we're already seeing this with Disney Plus, is they're already raising the price. And it's only a dollar, but that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. The price is going to go up for Disney Plus, especially. The price is going to go up. Yeah, Netflix is like 100 bucks now, it feels like. Yeah, basically. Yeah, Netflix keeps getting more and more expensive. And I think that's going to continue, right? I think that you're going to see these prices rise. That becomes an interesting perspective from an Apple standpoint, right? Because Apple thus far has, has treated Apple TV Plus as a loss leader completely. I mean, they gave it away for the first year. Um, now I, I feel like I get it for free because it's in my Apple One, nice. um, you know, subscription. So um, we don't really know what the value that people are willing to pay for Apple TV Plus is yet. Uh, and I mentioned that before, but I think that that's that's kind of the thing going forward is that these services are going to have to figure out how much they can charge. And I think that especially if it starts getting to the point where you're requiring um, theatrical releases and you're having to pay. Um, make good on some of those back end deals that might have been made on the, you know, um, assumption that there was going to be a theatrical release yeah. and that then it was going to be sold into, um, you know, like, a, you know, um, home video and then into, you know, broadcast licensing and whatnot. If, if you're having to kind of make those settlements and, and make those big payouts, um, Apple obviously has the money to do that, but uh, that doesn't kind of last forever. It's like, I think that increasingly consumers are going to have to expect that prices are going to go up. As always, you can find the full extended version of this video up on Nebula. That's the streaming platform I'm building along with my education -y creator friends like Legal Eagle, Sarah Z, Ali Abdal, Thomas Frank, Braincraft, Polymatter, and so many more. It's a place where we can put up extended and bonus content just like this without having to worry about demonetization or the tyranny of the click-through rate or watch time or algorithms, even ads. You can find all of my videos there completely ad-free, including Apple Talk, the new weekly podcast I'm doing with psychotherapist Georgia Dow, which has a bonus topic only available on Nebula. So what does any of this have to do with CuriosityStream? Well, as the go-to source for the best documentaries on the internet, they just love educational content and educational creators. And we worked out this deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description, you'll not only get CuriosityStream, but you'll also get a Nebula subscription for free. And for a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 41% off. 41% off for the holidays is just an even better best deal, just the best deal in the business. So click on the link in the description and get CuriosityStream for less than $12 a year, a year, or go to curiositystream.com slash Richie. It's a great way to support this channel and educational content directly. Just click on the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash Richie. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. For a ton more on just every service, every product Apple has planned for next year, hit the playlist above. I'm doing in-depth analysis and going over just every feature imaginable. So click on the playlist and I'll see you next video.